Hey everyone, welcome back to week six of the North American LCS Summer Split. Joining me now, the Telus Raider, to help sort through your Twitter responses is Joshua Jahat Leesman. Yeah, and it's been a crazy day. I'm glad I'm yeah. with the Telus Raider now, though. Yeah, it's been a whole bunch of fun. So earlier today in the broadcast, we asked, how do you show support for your favorite North American LCS team? It was tough to narrow it down, but here are a few of our favorites. Up first is a fan who wears his TSM pride on his sleeve. Yeah, that's not going away anytime soon. Definitely dedicated TSM fan for life. And hopefully they stay in the LCS. Yeah, that be A little bit harder to explain otherwise. <laughs> so, so, hey, they're top two guaranteed at the end of the day, so yeah. far they're going well. Yeah, uh, the next one comes from at OMG, it's Corey. Also a TSM supporter right here. Mm -hmm. From and Philadelphia. Yeah, well, it's okay. The original TSM house is in New York, so Bay Life can be East Coast or West Coast. I think it fits out. It's not oh, cheap getting those license plates. Well, actually, it's from California. The plate, though, it's all, it's all kind oh, of Oh, yeah, yeah. I like how we like, missed the giant missed cursive red California at the start, but it's okay. We've got it figured out. Next up, Bianca Bernal proves that team spirit and fashion can go hand in hand. Yeah, that is difficult, I believe, yeah. if I were someone to do nails. Uh, but yeah, it's not done the whole nails, though. That's true, you should get at least nine of them to be thematic. You can miss one, but that's it. So you got some work cut out for you, but it's okay. Yeah. Still pretty good. At as X Lim writes, supporting COG while serving tea at work. That is awesome. Yeah, COG shirt, COG barista. I think it's great. I always love running into people in real life, like at restaurants, whatever, who like play league and like recognize the players or like anything like that. It's so fun. It's just great to see people outside the game as well. Next up, Afro Circus sent in a snapshot of him supporting, or sorry, sporting a Dignitas hoodie while cheering on Kiwi Pie. Afro Circus helping Dignitas. Traitors. Mm. Yeah, a little bit of mixed loyalties right there. It's okay. It just means he likes all the teams. At Lux Rixanix actually sent this picture showing her sweet support for TSM in the kitchen with a cake. It's a good cake. I would eat that cake. Yeah. I wonder if she would give to TSM. Would TSM eat that cake? I hope so. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, see if it happens. And finally, we have at Erica Hendel putting her artistic skills to work. And look at that one. Damn. Yeah. That is more skilled than I am. Yeah, that is really cool. Is that charcoal? I'm I pretty think sure. it is. Yeah. Jeez. No matter what it is, it is legit after all. Yeah. Of course, you can still join the fun by tweeting us at LOL Esports and using the hashtag LCS because all the cool kids are doing it in peer pressure is a good thing. Now, as we throw it over to Raven Kobe to set the stage for our next match, Evil Geniuses say they still need a little more time to break in their new lineup. I think EG right now are getting used to their new players, Altic and Helios, so they have a lot of potential, but I think they're not that well coordinated right now. Sometimes their communication can be rough. We try to talk in English all the time when we're at the house, and just like Korean when it's something really, really specific that he doesn't know how to say. Overall, it's improving quite a bit. Helios has a lot of experience, so he can guide the team and make them do great stuff. New players always mean new opportunities, and Evil Geniuses is definitely a team that can make that happen. We'll see if they can right now. We're on to our next game, EG versus Team Curse. Now, these are two teams that are both looking tougher than ever, and they have improved, but with how tight the competition is in the North American League right now, they just haven't improved enough to climb in the standings. They have taken games off some of the top teams, but they've struggled to find that consistency that everyone strives for. And for Curse, they've finally separated themselves from the Evil Geniuses and will be looking to build on that lead in the standings. Yeah, Qua specifically came up big in their upset win over CLG last week. He's always had this interesting champion pool for the top lane, and with the new patch, there will be an increased emphasis on counterpicking as we may get more traditional one versus one matchups. Yeah. So fans may finally get to see Qua shine on some of those new champions, although I did ask him before the games today, and he said oh. I would be disappointed. So that's uh, not good. Well, maybe <laughs> he'll disappoint you on that and actually it's a trick. get the pick. It's a mind game. As for the Evil Geniuses, they've shown improvement, but continue to be a work in progress, you could say. Yeah, Evil Geniuses have been trying to reinvent themselves pretty much all split long. With this 4-10 patch shaking up the entire league, this is definitely a big opportunity for them. And one of the things that we've already seen Evil Geniuses doing, even before this 4.10 patch, is putting that er extra emphasis on the early dragons. Mm -hmm. They've stopped some of the early dragons. That's a great strategy especially now that the value of the dragon has gone up with the new patch. However, you actually have to execute it properly. We've seen a lot of teams now expecting this strategy and countering it. So the people who go try and stop it just end up dying, and it snowballs against them. You have to counter the counter of the counter. 
As soon as somebody comes out with the next move, just there's believe. always a one-up. <laughs> All right, let's get it right into this one and see who can get that first one-up. On the blue side, it's Evil Geniuses. In the top lane is Inox, Helios in the jungle, Pole Belter in mid lane, all tech to carry, and Crepo on and, support. And on the red side, it is Curse. Up top is Quas in the jungle. I will dominate mid Void Boy, AD carry cop, and supporting X Special. Both of these teams coming in, one, three, and nine, Evil Geniuses, four, and eight, Curse. Both teams have had the ability to kind of take down top teams, but yeah. both are also faltering against the lower teams. It's a weird situation that they have. And then we see teams like Complexity beating Cloud9. Topsy-turvy NA system. Complexity yeah. really impressed me yeah. that last game. The strategy that they put into this first game coming back off of this, 4 all yeah. the changes, right. they've, it seems to me like they have pretty much hit this patch just running. They, they have impressed me the most out of all the teams and, and as far as adapting goes. And who knows, this might actually be kind of that level up that EG needs. Maybe we haven't seen all of Helios' champion pool. He's only been in a few games for Evil Geniuses and, and considering he's still a trial for them. So we'll see what he can bring out to solidify that. Yeah, and they, everyone keeps talking about you know how much of a veteran Helios is. However, that communication is definitely an issue. Uh, being able to communicate those ideas clearly and right. quickly inside yeah. the game uh, sometimes can be a problem. Right. But the whole team knows that, and they've been working on their shot calling a lot together ever since they got him into the house. Uh, pretty much, it's just getting better and better every single week. And this was a pretty quick matchup last time we had it. It was a 28 minutes match, curse win. They were able to come out strong. At first inhibitor at 26 minutes, so you can kind of tell that after the inhibitor, they had a full control. Two minutes later was the win. We'll see if EG can stop that this time. We'll see if they put up a little bit more defense. Picks and bans has been quite a variety starting out here in week six on 4.10. So let's see what EG and Curse have done for homework. Yes, yeah, some of the biggest changes have been more utility and range oriented top laners, right. whereas bottom lane supports have gone really, really heavily uh, towards the sustained supports like Nami and Sona. So a lot of emphasis has been put there as well. Some cases, this has actually let through the top two junglers, Lee and Elise, which right. were pretty much completely banned out uh, previous to this. But this time around, he does get one anyway. It's cop and Altec on your screen. Now the supports that will be right behind them offering just that, a little bit of safety. We've seen some great support picks today. Sona even getting into the mix. Seen that over a bit in Korea as well. As we finalize out the bands, Cassidy does find himself a blue side band. What are they kind of forcing to get out of here on the side of Curse? Yeah, interesting to see uh, blue side Cassidy yeah. band always. However, Kale being up right now, All right. there's a couple of different options here for Curse. They're trying to decide which of these uh, very strong champions they don't want to give up. They could leave up everything, go with a throwaway ban. Um, and they, but they, <laughs> if you do that, Kale is pretty much right Ooh. now considered basically the top pick. Right. If you have the any top, single top pick. one pick, <laughs> yeah, there you go, the top top pick uh, for that lane. If you have any single one pick, pretty yeah. much teams are always first picking this Kale. However, that leaves up so many more options. There's Lucian for the bottom lane. There's TF for the right. mid lane. Lucian didn't even get picked last game. Crazy. Elise for the jungle with Lee Sin being banned out. That's definitely a very high priority. And Curse have also banned out the Nunu for Helios. So we will get to see mm -hmm. a little bit more of that champion pool. How deep does it go for Helios? That's interesting. Curse puts a lot on that. And Nunu does provide that map pressure. Curse knows it, and they feel that Helios can apply that pressure accordingly. That is a ban, Nunu. For the last one, the Kale goes over. Considering the power of those two, we know where Curse's mindset is. And they want to be able to control the game. They think the lanes will be all right. Really? Yeah, Free. Well, it's interesting that Curse go with this strategy of leaving Kale open, which is a very obvious first pick for EG, but then they wait a little while for their second picks there. Just kidding, we're back. Ha ha ha! Darkness. <laughs> we're gonna be losing LP if we leave Champion Select now. Can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. Now Tristana and Elise locked in. We got a hover on Avalon for Helios at the moment. He's just hanging out while we wait to get you back into the Champion Select screen. We're still gonna paint it for you. A beautiful picture here, some lovely little clouds. Beautiful mountains. Just a few technical issues. And they Eve, are still going through. Eve Lockin. Eve has made her way down the stream here into the picture. There she is. 
So the thing about uh, Evelyn now, a lot of people used to build uh, Randuins on her because uh, as their first defensive item, just because it's an all-around amazing item. However, with the recent nerfs to her, I really favor just getting a little bit of health and then turning into a frozen heart rather than <laughs> completing to a Randuins. Uh, Don't be a bonehead. That's <laughs> not going to happen. Don't worry. Anyways, frozen heart now is... Uh, Definitely one of my favorite items on champions that can benefit from it, like Evelyn, because uh, she <laughs> thrives when she gets cooldown reduction. Um, and the Frozen Heart attack speed reduction was not touched. It was just the random one. So we'll see if Helios goes that route. Braum is picked up by X Special, so they're going to go for the heavy duty support. Obviously, there are bands on the screen. They are just not shown to you at the moment. Let's see, it's going to be that Rise lock-in. Come back on the 4.10. All Tech Ticks picks up the Jinx as well. Yeah. Very interesting here. Void Boy is the final pick on that side. Interesting uh, solo laners here for Evil Geniuses because uh -huh. you're not quite sure which one is going to go top. I definitely put my money on Kale right now um, because she would have a pretty good advantage over Renekton. But yeah. same thing with Rise. If they're able to abuse that range early on, uh, then they can actually do just fine against Renekton. And then it's all up to jungler intervention because that's easily turned around. Any range champion, yes, if left alone, you have that advantage over the melee. However, the melee always has that kill potential, the pressure right. on you, especially if their jungler comes. That's where it turns dicey. I would like this Syndra pick, and he does lock it in. Liking that pick because it kind of makes the Kale focus on using her ult. Once that ult from Syndra goes off, you pretty much know you're dead. It's a call for the Kale ult right away, so you can kind of force that out. Yeah, the thing is, if Kale is not stunned, then it's yeah, fairly easy too. to react and shield that target. Right. Because the Syndra ultimate is not instantaneous. You can definitely react to it. You have plenty of time as long as you don't get CC. Yep. So we'll see how well Inox can react to those once they get to the team fight stage. Uh, but you don't jump straight to the team fight phase. We'll have to see <laughs> first if they go to standard lanes, uh, because that's going to be interesting. Braum, Tristana. I'm excited. Tristana's actually always a, had a different support. It actually has a lot of all-in potential. So, <laughs> All the new for 4.10. While the team's loaded into the game, let's tabulate the votes over at LOLesports.com. And right now, Curse is leading Evil Geniuses with a vote of 58%. But as always, you can continue to vote by sending your hashtag EG win or CRS win to at LOL Esports. Uh, just keep on tweeting those and we will keep updating. That is correct. Check it out in the score screen down at the scoreboard as well as the tweets throughout the game. So if you're tweeting kind of like that was an awesome play, Helios is being a boss, dominates being a boss, that may show up and you may be right on the stream with your name on Twitter. Social media is huge. And you yeah. get a lot of ads. Every, everybody and wants to be friends. on the <laughs> But the cool spot is being here you make it to the studio. Yeah, get a ticket, join the studio audience. Yep. <laughs> you get to see matches like we just had the previous two, especially for 4.10. You're here to meet the pros, talk to them about the newest things that they're trying, if they'll kind of give up what you want to hear. You know, we always try to get it out of them on the interview desk, but it's, it's here or there. Sometimes they give us a little bit. Yeah, plus you can get them to sign your face if you want to. Absolutely. <laughs> right across the forehead. Doesn't cost a thing. Just bring a permanent marker. <laughs> Loading onto the rift, face to face. About to be a grueling matchup. Evil Geniuses versus Curse. Game three is locked and loaded. We are on to the rift. Poro stash. Unless you have the opportunity to get yourself a poor. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Sweeper coming out from both junglers. Sweeper starts. Interesting. We'll see if they do go for those jungle invades. That would signal uh, some lane swaps here. We'll have to see what Curse want to do um, since EG have two range solo laners. Very interesting as I look around these champions played by Evil Geniuses. Poe Belter, I'm not too surprised about. He last split had the most, or one of the most unique amount of champions played. But Alltech here in 4.10, mm -hmm. the first time he's bringing out Jinx. So he's got something up his sleeve, and we know Alltech to be an out of the laning phase team fight killer, bringing his KDA up very high. Usually only dies a few times due to his positioning, so something to keep an eye on. But there's a lot to keep an eye on in this game with the picks we've had. Bit of a pressure start here. The Dark Binding hits, but Expecial, he's big and he has a mustache. It's all right. Yep, there's Sweeper number one. Curse do go through with the invade. Looks like they will claim this side of the map for their own. Mm -hmm. 
A lot of defensive wards going down. It was a good binding by Crepo. Doesn't get caught. Doesn't have to burn any summoner spells for himself. First time we'll really get to see what this utility slash ability power top lane matchup will be like. We've kind of had all tanks going face to face today, but this has been the bird's the word. AP tops, what's going on? Well, let's see here because Curse have actually claimed this side of the map usually indicates that their AD carry and support will go top for that swap. Mm -hmm. And then the question arises, what happens with this early dragon? Um, because Evil Genius have been the ones that have been trying to stop it, but they're the ones who actually have control of it for the beginning of this game. And it's up to Curse to actually make something happen. Usually it's been a roaming support to try and come uh, deal with that early dragon because it is worth more money. You don't want to just give it away. Oh. See what they do. Like you said, worth more money if they can make some quick moves in the game. Because we had a pretty late dragon, I'd say, last game, but that also was attributed to the standard laning phase. A little bit of movement here onto either side of the jungle. We see that Helios is making his way in with Inox right now. The buddy system back in for 4.10 still. Yeah, and it's funny because, yes, Kale is an amazing top laner, but Kale is also used as a jungler uh, fairly often. Yeah, so it's true. Definitely at home in this buddy system <laughs> jungling style uh, that has come up. Plus, she has great utility even if she doesn't um, get that early farm. Yes, you'd love to have your late game kill right. and have the extra very high source of damage. But even if she has a slow start, as soon as he hits level 6, is going to have that very big impact as long as the timing is there for the ultimate. Doing a great job of keeping each other up in HP and kind of microing that damage back and forth. Could Coming be towards up. the bottom lane, but yeah, we got pings towards the middle. Coming up on that three-minute dragon here. So what is going to be the response from Curse? EG actually don't even try to start it up. A little, little walk down here. This adventure by a special halfway down was enough to scare them off. But once yep. he shows back in lane, they know that they have a tremendous advantage down on that bottom side of the map. So interesting from Krepo. Numbers definitely heavily in their favor. Krepo just back and forth through mid, soaking up experience. This is solo now for Alltech in the bottom lane, shared by Cup and Expecial. See how they use this. That could make, you know, Alltech bigger if they try to go for Dragon, but he's not really the one that's diving in. Yeah, so far for e uh, Evil Geniuses, when they've been winning, Alltech has been hard carrying yeah. with them. He has the highest KDA for any AD carry in the entire North American LCS. Yep. Third most kills. He performs extremely well, and, and least deaths. That's yeah. where that KDA comes from. Yep. Uh, he performs extremely well in those team fights specifically. Um, so they're very happy actually to have that trade. Jinx and Tristana both scale very well. Uh, it's not gonna be too much of an issue there. But the real surprising thing is that Evil Geniuses haven't gone for that early dragon, uh, even with a special showing back up in the top lane. Now that he has left the top lane, mm. Pope Butler has to play a lot more safe, as you can see. Hugging his turret, and this three-man squad of Curse just wastes a lot of time there. Doesn't get anything done on him, except zoning him away from creeps. So they will delay as yep. well the scaling of the rise, which is always what you want to do when facing him. Both teams have a bit of scaling, so they're happy to get to the late game. Cop will be there on Trist, Pope Belt will be there on Rise. Not a push by the bottom lane or the top lane, so these AD carries are looking to farm for a while. Yeah, Evil Genius is playing extremely safe. They don't want to risk going for the early dragon because, yes, it's a great boost of gold and it will get you off to a really good start. However, it's definitely dangerous, and we've seen a lot of teams get caught out uh, doing that. You pretty much have to jungle, juggle the aggro of the dragon back and forth so that you don't take damage from it this early on because it does so much. They do pull the trigger here, timing it with the back of Syndra. This is where Evil Genius is. They're still playing safe. Yeah. Now they have the confidence to go for this, even though they are messing up the, <laughs> the aggro jungling <laughs> a bit there. They time it with the back of the mid laner yeah. so that they're 100% sure that it's a safe move. Well, they're remembering last time when Patience Amazing pays off for them. came in and started getting kills. Expecial, he gets hit by the binding. That's a very dark follow up there. There's no vision on that other side. Right now, they're getting that vision, and it looks like they can keep going by their rights. They start to back out. A little false sense of security here as Voidway. Very nice damage across Crepo and Helios for just the scout of the week. Yeah, that was just a taste. 
of what Syndra can do uh, to this team. Very nice and that grouping up of that stun. However, 45 to 25. Evil Genius is finally pulling the trigger, you know, playing yeah. that uh, safe and steady game here. Now they do get that boost. They'll have the timer. Both teams should actually have an estimation of the timer for the next dragon, though. Uh, and we'll see if Curse can actually get in position for the next one. And who can make himself more useful out of that top lane? 14 and 6 CS right now. It's going to be rough. It's what we usually see. But how are they going to work it in 4.10, especially for Quas on Renekton? It's different for Renekton. Yeah, uh, Renekton, he doesn't have an ultimate that's pretty much all utility. However, he has an ultimate that provides a lot of mm. combat effectiveness. Uh, whole bunch of HP, even though it was nerfed early on, the early ranks of it not providing as much as before, it's still definitely beneficial for that team, uh, whereas Evil Genius is going to have to rely on blocking damage rather than soaking it up. Let's see what Dominate can get out of aggression here. Something we've seen, not a lack of, but definitely less mm -hmm. from Helios. The standard lanes have kind of put him in the buddy system, but usually Helo Helios has been in the face of somebody already, making something happen. Yeah, especially on the games where he is Lee or Elise. Right. He has not hesitated to go fight the other jungler over and over again. Evelyn is actually a very good champion for doing that as well, um, because she can get the initiative when fighting in the jungle. She has the advantage over pretty much every jungler if you find your opponent fighting a camp because they're using their spells on the camp and that means less damage that will be available to them when they fight you. Let's see how this circle around mid goes though. Four versus four. AD carry is still farming Sard lanes. You see what kind of pressure Void Boy and the rest of the composition provide there. Just scatter the weak, puts Rise or rather Pobelter back on his heels and they can't even get close to dominate Cocoon and the rest of the team's ready. Here's Helios for that aggression, finally. Yeah, uh, so this is actually the opportunity for Curse to get three buffs second time around. Quick smite there is able to snag it. Helios does not let uh, get his smite off in time. So EG still trying to make moves. Top turret could go down quite soon, and that would mean Cop is on the move. Yeah, good teleport in here for Inox, trying to collect some extra experience. It is that time for him. Quas did the same thing, though. All he had to do was walk down to the bottom. Ooh. Prediction binding there. It wasn't as bad as it looked. He predicted a <laughs> he predicted a dodge from Boy Boy. Just a, yeah. a little bit too far wide there from Crepo. Pole belts are feeling a bit of the pain with a Negatron Cloak first buy in mid-30 CS down there. And that's where you can see Crepo's been helping or trying to help. Helios has been kind of in the buddy system and hasn't been able to help. And Void Boy, he's having real fun in mid now. Yeah, the story here for Curse is going to be... Uh-oh! Quas or Ooh. Inox actually takes a good chunk from Cop, who is a higher level. So even though it's technically uh, what would yeah. be a solo laner that versus been an great. carry, Cop definitely has a huge advantage here. If they can get those concussive blows to lock on, Inox was not six yet. Right, so this is why I was saying this is potentially a kill lane, Tristana yeah. plus Braum. Uh, Tristana can be an all in AD carry, as we've seen from Complexity. <laughs> Robert. Not hesitating to rocket jump into the fray. Uh, when you have this type of level advantage as well, should give him the confidence to do that. However, we always talk about how Ooh. Cop is not wow. the AD carry that's aggressive and will make those solo moves. Right. He's much how you know Reckless used to play, where Reckless he said he would wait for his opponent to make a mistake and then capitalize on yeah. it. That's the same mentality that Kopp has always had. However, Reckless is trying to change that strategy, and uh, Kopp as well, at times, has tried to change it and be more of an offensive uh, yeah. AD carry. You gotta have to make that the switch. Move. You gotta be versatle. Turn it on, turn it off. I mean, I think Kopp out of most AD uh -oh. carries. Oh dear, that turret goes down a little faster than I think Quas thought. He uses one slice without the dice, and he's in safety. So both AD carries, though, since they've been hard farming this mm -hmm. entire time, have not gone back to purchase. They still do very low damage. So even though Quas does get caught in the combo, uh, there's no items there to back up the catch. And he is able to escape safely. Since they also both got very easy laning phase, both of these AD carries will most definitely be going for the Infinity Edge Ooh. late game build, trying to combo their early Infinity Edge with some uh, yeah. crit. Oh, Tristana actually cop fills a whole Blade of the Ruined King with his first purchase back. Yep. So maybe he will, changing up his style, because this is definitely has a lot more opportunity uh, for cop to make plays. Blade right. of the Ruined King 
is not the passive build. That would be the Infinity Edge um, rush. Kind of oh. really passive in the early game. Cop now definitely has the opportunity uh, for those all-ins, especially since Jink has not actually been able to complete right. the Infinity Edge. Scrying orb as well from Altec quite early on this one. He gets himself that vision out, looking to hit some rockets possibly in the end or some good zaps if the vision wears off. Cobalter clears out mid, seven seconds on the dragon, and that is already foreshadowed by Curse. Let's see if this uh, build difference does does uh, really come to be a factor here. I guess it won't because EG, with their jungler top, are conceding this dragon. Yep. So they probably won't even fight this. They know that their AD carry is going to be weaker uh, since Top's got his Blade of the Rune King. So they just send Helios top to try and trade dragon for farm against Quas. The turret, very, very high HP, though, so it will take a very long time for them to actually equalize the objectives, whereas Cursed, wasting no time. They've been in really good position every time they're moving down a lane. We saw them take mid and then take top right after. Just a few minutes later, they're putting damage on the second tier turret in the mid lane. They got four there to do it. Now drawing all that pressure back, they're getting collapsed on. I don't think Helios can do much with that, Circling though. Circling around behind is very yeah. dangerous at this point. Now, the difference between these uh, squads right now is that Evil Genius have a lot less crowd control. Curse are bringing so many different options here uh, to stun up the members of Evil Geniuses that are you know, taking time to build their damage. Helis barely gets his blue. I might that out. out. But yeah, if especially Poe Belter, if he gets caught out early since he was denied a lot of farm, right now he is in a very, very squishy state if he gets uh, stunned up by really any of these options here. And his backs really haven't not been the greatest, but he's unfortunately not had a ton of money. Always piecing things together. It's helping, but I know he'd love to finish one of those up. Item threshold of Athene's already reached out by Vorboy. Yeah, you know, still going with that item because they're against not only a double AP comp here with the Kale plus Rise, but also a hybrid jungler, a lot of ability power yeah. damage coming from Evelyn. So if Curse are able to focus Alltech, and if they ever get one of these Syndra stuns or cocoons onto Alltech, and they take out that physical damage source, they can easily just all itemize magic resistance, right. as we're seeing here. Very early magic resistance from Curse, um, and just focus their damage onto Alltech, who's this very low mobility AD carry unless she gets a kill. If they take out that threat, uh, then it's a very, a very efficient build path that they're taking here. Quite a slow game around the map. Definitely playing in Curse's favor. Just 50 CS to the top laners at 15 minutes. Dominate. Giving a little hell over to Helios with the smite out on the Wraith camp. And they, their item thresholds, you know, head and shoulders above right now. If they can get a good fight for themselves. We'll see if they can get into that. Curse is moving down to the bottom lane. We still got quite a bit of time on Dragon. So this is for a bit of a push. Yeah, so even though Jinx has finished the Infinity Edge now, yeah. really it doesn't start to become a big issue until uh, he can combo that with another item. Infinity Edge really just ups the scaling, ups the value of buying crit on your yeah. AD carry. So the next item for Alltech will be extremely valuable. Right now, you can't afford to fight people. Scrying Orb used out there just above them to make sure they are quite safe. And it looks like they don't have anybody coming in. So now EG is trying to repair this pressure. Adapt to it. A third outer turret taken down by Curse as they build that gold lead. It's not too much just yet. Definitely something, or I should say nothing, a dragon can't put back in order for EG. Yeah, we'll see how well EG can hold on because they would like to, uh, they would like to have their solo laners scale up here. Ryzen. Kale can become beastly, yeah. but they're not given any time here. Curse is doing a great job keeping up the pressure. This is a very strong uh, rotation, an actual rotation from bottom up to mid here. They get another turret. Very good play here so far from Curse. See if they can actually keep up this pressure, though. Yep. Sometimes something they get themselves into trouble with, but that's when they're trying to pressure from behind. Here it should be smooth sailing. They got the wards out. Got wards also in the inventory, a few pinks, a lot of greens, and they are looking to get more map control. Right now, it's actually pretty lit up for them to start. They just don't even have any reason to get into the side of EG's jungle. Two minutes on Dragon, they already got that pinked out. It looks like EG's just pushing out their lanes to prep as well.
And Curse are doing a good job too. I like how they're building a lot of cooldown reduction on their crowd control members. Both like Special and Dominate, uh, even Boy Boy with his Athenes. The more cooldown reduction, the more of these stuns that they can throw out mean that they can lock down these really good scaling, but actually quite squishy in the early and mid game right. champions that Evil Geniuses are running. If you get, like you said, if Jinx doesn't get a kill, Bryze, Jinx, and Crepo on Morgana are quite immobile, so stick after stick, it's going to be very hard to get away from Yeah, we'll fight. see how on point Crepo can be with his Black Shield. Yeah. Because those will be crucial. It's you always know, a fun little mini these, game. These CC teams have become even stronger in 410 with the increased cost of Mikhail's Crucible. Yeah. A lot of the support's taking way longer to get that Mikhail's Crucible nowadays, so uh, much harder to get people out of picks. And thus, the battle over Vision has increased in importance as well. Because that's the only way to avoid getting picked off nowadays. That was a good fight. That was a good back and forth. I definitely put their all into that one. We'll see, it looks like it may just be that Infinity Edge coming out after for Triss. Zerk Grease as well. Quaz buys a quick Banshees to get himself saved up. A little bit of Inox harass, keep this lane pushing and not be worried about getting knocked out. 10 to 9 in that lane. There's been Inox getting a little bit of the lead in CS, so you can see kind of how that plays out, but they didn't get matched up, so it's not really the truthful matchup. Kale is actually very strong at split pushing as well, so yeah. uh, Inox is going to be pretty happy uh, with the uh, situation of the game right now. See if this four seconds on Dragon, looks like he's just going to walk down. They're going to try and burn the teleport of Quas since they were able to shove the lane so quickly with Kale's AoE. Take a quick advantage here. Good move with Cop on Dragon and a Blade of the Rune King. That thing should go down quite fast. Actually not even able to get to it. Helios finds Cop. There's the Blade. That's the kiting that he needs. A few more shots. That's the Mikhails. But now do they have enough to turn the fight? Not with Helios that low, apparently. Poe Belter's going to get up. The jump in. The first blood going over to Cop. Turning Trist into that carry earlier than usual. Inox is going to be the next one. Mikhail, or his Kale's ultimate of intervention is already down. And Crepo just tries to get a few more bits of damage in as EG heads for base. Yeah, great catch by Curse there. They, Poe Belter did not get to use a single spell nope. before he went down here. So, Cop, as we said, he comes up big with his Blade of the Rune King build. Uh, very, very effective early on versus Helios there. One versus one, one here. jungler. Yeah, Helios opens up on Quas here, or on Cop, but then he takes <laughs> a lot of damage in return. What have I done? And then the Kale's Huge leaves. mistake. The intervention's so, out. Yeah, intervention down just means we're going to stun you up with everything that oh. we brought. And Cop does jump forward, playing aggressive on that Tristana. Special, yeah, he misses one there. <laughs> wow, cameraman slowed it down just so he could see. <laughs> Those blades of grass are really big. Sometimes you just can't see coming out of the brush. 20 minutes on the clock. Looks like the blue buff easily transferred over to Voiboy. Boy. These guys having a great time right now in this game. Curse up by 4,000 gold in this matchup now. 4.10 has not been nice to teams that are down in gold. Not at all. Once you have that lead, teams have been able to carry it quite good. And we've seen how effective uh, their chain CC has been. Oh, man. The concussive blows was kind of just the, the cherry on the cake there. I was like, why isn't Rise moving? <laughs> Never. Cocoon after, scatter the weak. Like you said, Kobe, it's coming in great. Yeah, a lot of people kind of get carried away with scaling, this scaling that gets thrown around a lot. And a lot of times they just think about how damage scales um, and not necessarily utility scaling. Mm -hmm. We'll see here, though, because Curse are also going to bring the damage now. Gold advantage translates into extra items. Boy Boy gets a needlessly large rod, almost able to complete yeah. his death cap here. So he's going to have enough. Whoa! <laughs> enough damage, but not enough defense. That was a hit up on both sides. We see Crepo went down a little bit ago. Looks like a room prison into Altec's attacks was able to take down Boy Boy. They're slowly moving themselves. So, Crepo goes down for that kill, by the way. Right, yeah, he did get it, yeah. I think it was see, a one flash more. in for an Oh, he so hit binding it right into over flash the minion. Ult. Yeah, okay. So, binding into flash ult, uh, sacrifices his life for the mid laner. And you can see that reaction ult from Voiboy. If you're going to take me down, I'm taking you with me. It's a big all tech right now. 203 with an assist on top of that. Tristana already getting more of that crit and attack speed. So, that's only going to hurt. 
Doesn't even really need any armor pen just yet either, because nobody has armor on the side of Curse. Ooh, see if this bush gank works out, though. Uh, I don't know if all this success has gone to Cop's head. How far will he push? Well, saying if you can get a good zap on, let's start Not off a nice well. hit. See the movement of Cop as well. He just wants Wraith. He's not going to come back for any silly 1v1s. The ga gold gap closing just slightly. Just slightly. Yeah, and if Evil Geniuses can hold on, they still do have all these champions that are mm -hmm. going to be great later. And tough, but they I can. mean, we've already got Infinity Edge. He's starting to build those second items. He's p piling on a lot of crit now to back it up. Plus, Ryze has completed both of his scaling mana items, so those are slowly ticking up. Evil Geniuses, uh, the curve on their power graph right now increase very quickly. Ping's out, trying to get control over Dragon. We'll see what Pole Belter can do with his team coming in here. We saw the intervention used out last fight on Helios. Immediately, his aggression brought him to cop. So we'll see if the chaos can be kind of toned down by evil geniuses if they get pushed into a next Dragon fight. Right now, both teams just soaking up experience, getting ready for that next fight. Not much to push, Kobe. The lanes are all evened out. Pretty good ward coverage as well here for Curse, deep in this blue side jungle. Uh, we'll see if they want to continue to control the respawn of these blues. Definitely want to keep that away uh, from any double AP team. Also, side benefit of controlling the Baron area, great for baits. Yeah, doing a great job of trying to dictate something in their favor. Really cause EG to be the one to dance around. Good positioning for Curse. Not a whole heck of a lot of damage. The Blade of the Rune King would help if they went onto Baron, but a little too risky. So they stay off. Helios just on the outside. Scaring off Cop. A little bit of a stalemate. Nobody wants to make a move. Usually, as I just said, Curse, when they're kind of ahead, will push themselves into something that seems a little dangerous. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Baron Pit is a little dangerous. It's EG a little kind dangerous. Of, uh, dare Curse to go for us, though. They send down Kale bottom. Baron's this only puts the crunch on 75%. Curse. It makes Curse have to make a decision right now. They commit oh. to Baron, but there's so much damage. Out of the fog of war, you see how much damage Dominate took. They weren't really giving the damage back and forth. Altex on the outside. A flash from Quas tries to shut him down, but he flashes and nobody else can get that kind of gap closed. It's Altec on the backside. What does Altec do in fights? He crushes with the rest of the oh. team. He hits the staff. He flashes in for the double kill. Altec going crazy this fight. A triple kill? Yeah, it's going to Pole Belcher though, because he's a good guy. What a move from Evil Geniuses. Inox teleports in with his intervention on him. We always talk about the timing for this Kale ult. He's wow. right in the middle of this cursed team, but they all have to run away because he's invulnerable. What a move from Evil Geniuses, forcing Curse to commit to something by sending Inox bottom. They're rewarded with Baron on top of it. Beautiful play. Wow, 24 minute, bring it Baron. Here Coming comes in here Inox, right in the middle of the whole team, but he's invincible. Cop is shooting at him, zero damage done. Quas actually had to soak up the damage, and he goes down fast. Zap into Flash here from Altec. Tip of the cork. Nabs dominate, and they're easily able to chase him down. The speed of both Rise and Jinx. What a beautiful collapse from Evil Geniuses on that Baron. What a turnaround. Curse is trying to clean up the bits now, clear out the wards on their side of the map. Evil Geniuses. Many items completed there. Looking to get the Seraph's Embrace up on Pole Belter quite soon. That Rod of Ages close to nearly stacked, if not already. Rod of Ages on Inox. A lot of burst and power grabbed up. You can see the Blade of the Rune King is going to be next for Altec as well. Yeah, he's stacking up some lifesteal now. Right. Uh, on top of his crit plus Infinity Edge because he knows he is the target here for Curse. With Curse putting a lot of money into magic resistance defense here, they know that Altec is number one target, and since he's uh, very low mobility with Jinx, yeah. he's going to have to have some sort of survivability. He's going to rely on that life steal for now. Rest of Curse really need to start getting some kills if they can. Void Boy is the one to hold two, and he's been a quite a big focus. Also allowing Helios and Pole Belter within this last fight to get Negatron Cloaks. Almost nullify the fact that he can zero them out. It'll still be a lot of damage, but EG is just getting themselves every little advantage possible as this game goes on. Pushed off of this, so Curse still has the Siege stop potential. Yeah, and there is a, a bit of weight on Altec's shoulders right now. He knows that if he does not mess wow. his positioning up, 2, gold and he stays safe, 
then he can rely on Rise and Kale uh, to just get out of control here. Uh, their damage is going to go off off the end of the, the deep end here pretty soon. They keep up the pressure with this Baron buff. See how much they can actually take with this purple buff advantage. All attack, good focus on the turret. EG with no problems getting another outer down and all they have this top lane outer turret. They'll be right into the base. Very dominating game by Evil Genius is here. Seeing a lot of different things in 4.10. Seems like it's uh, suiting them quite well. Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, double shields on top of Jinx late game. Sounds like yeah. a good idea. It's up to Crepo and Inox, though. Keep him safe. And Alltech really coming through with consistency. The fight phase breaks out once again. He picks himself up some even flashy kills. They're never just kills. And he's doing it for his first time on Jinx, and it just looks like he feels so comfortable. I mean, yeah, it's it's definitely um, no surprise that Evil Geniuses have this much faith in Alltech. Yeah, after that's how true. he's been performing. I mean, he doesn't get the top eight KDA for AD carries and second overall by you know any any person in the league, by yeah. the way, for North America um, by by playing risky. So. Definitely well-deserved position for him. He's got the CS to prove it too. About 50 up in that range, 2-0-3. And the team even feels comfortable moving up without him. Knowing where the wards are, knowing where they can clear. Really, they don't have to worry about anything. Curse doesn't have the wards to attack at this point. Yeah, that's pretty much the main thing EG are looking out for, a curse pick. Yeah. Because any curse pick can easily uh, result in a kill. They've got plenty of damage themselves. So they can definitely catch someone if they get out of position. Tristana as well. Nothing to scoff at late game here. Uh, range increase Apparently is going not. to be really, really big for them late game. She's been picked quite a lot. Slow moving. Is EG going to go ahead and back? Locket of the Iron Solari could be finished up on two members here for even more shields. Or two shields as well. Saras and Brace will then be on Pole Belter. He'll have his own. And these guys can really start to work some dangerous situations. Some they've already been putting themselves in with the Baron attempt at 24 minutes. But it's all working out for him so far. Good wards, forward wards as well. And Curse Cop going back now. He does have a few items. Not really game-changing items, though. It's going to be tough for Curse in these fights. Yeah, he's probably looking to get some, some extra crit before their next fight. He does get a Negatron Cloak yeah. for himself because of all the magic damage. And then we see the power spike. As we talked about, that really, really big Baron fight right there. That's what going for the Baron and losing out will do to you. Dominate and the rest of the team cleaning up what they can. So at least it's not evil geniuses. It's only making them bigger that they can farm every lane uncontested right now. And it's really just curse holding their breath, hoping they don't get picked off inside their jungle. Yep, it's all that ward coverage. Evil Geniuses feel very, very confident right now. Uh, they don't have to shove in towards inhibitor turrets yet. Uh, a little bit too risky. All they have to do is just soak up all the extra money on the map that's available to them. Good stun by Boy Boy. It chained onto Altec. Altec gets hit right out of that one quickly. They don't even use the locket of the Iron Solari. No damage there. That, though, was very close. Yeah. Because you could see, if you miss time, don't get your... Uh, Shields off on Altec. If there was damage here from Curse, that would be disastrous for yep. the EG team. Fortunate for him, he does have that Blade of the Rune King finish so he can heal back up, and they give him the blue buff as well. Keep the chase on, keep the zaps coming. Keep the uh, switches on his rocket as well. Yep. Slow moving from Poe Belter, pick up the blue. EG setting themselves up for a pretty nice push, or what should be coming up here. Boy, boy. He fared well in mid lane, but he's not able to use any of that power with the amount of, you know, how far the other lanes fell behind. Yeah, I think it is looking uh, pretty bad for Curse in general right now. You know, not even just Void Boy, because yeah, this right. late game Kale is a split pushing beast. Inox with teleport, he can shove a lane so fast, and he's so quick with the scaling move speed of his W since he's gone yeah. Rabadon's death cap instead of the Runon's Hurricane. He's extremely quick as oh. well as doing all this splash damage. Yeah, you can't even bring the party to him. So yeah, Quas can't handle it. Even though Quas went all this early magic resistance, he's had to transition into a Randuin's because of the power of Alltech. 
So he can't really handle Kale anymore. There's not much that Curse have to deal with a late game split pushing Kale who's already got the core two items. And it's going to be a very, very tricky maneuver for Curse to get back in this game. Dragon and Baron both up. Now it gets dangerous. Yeah. They are going to be forced to make a call for which objective uh, they want to give up. They, make because they can't pressure. defend everything. They can't defend Kale and right. Baron at That's the same split time. Push. Already drawing Quas down, but the teleports are there. And they're slowly going to make their way towards the bottom side of the map as well. Knowing that Curse not exactly going to be going for that Baron. Like you said, both the objectives are live. A turret just going down, or Dragon rather, going down along the top turret. Ooh, Altec getting some defenses now too. Red Elixir plus his Negatron Cloak. It's going to be hard to take him down even if they do catch him out. He takes a pretty easy Dragon for himself there. Extra gold here for EG. And the story gets worse and worse for Curse. This is kind of the situation Curse falls into. They even say it themselves. The calls kind of aren't followed. They'll make them, and they're unsure if you want to follow. Silence in the late game is chaos. And if a team falls into that, it gets quite hard. Right now, they're still remembering to ward, keeping the little things in mind. And now trying to prioritize. Getting a mistake out of Evil Genius is something they've been consistently not making this game. Yeah, and right now they even have top lane pushing for them with just minions. So everything right now, perfect for Evil Geniuses. They get the Inox versus Quas matchup. That's easy for Inox to kite him with. They've got the top lane killing itself on the turret and the opportunity to try and Baron bait here. Quite a different game from the first one we saw. Said that was 28 minutes with Curse taking down the first inhibit, 26. So after they were in the base, it was quite over. Really, EG can't crack the base open just yet. They're trying on the bottom side. A good push in middle. We'll see if Inox can pull Quas away. See if they can do it this time. And after last week, you know, last week was a game where Curse made a mid game mistake, yet they still recovered from it. Right. Which is something that we hadn't seen from them in a long time. And it gave a lot of Curse fans hope. Good catch on Cole Belter. They get the flash out. A nice soul shackle from Crepo is able to slow and lock down a few. Galtek missing that one, but they get a nice shot and crit over to dominate. Turret's going down on the bottom side as well. Helios and Inox going to work there. And it looks like EG has finally broken the ice on Curse's base, and they're having fun. Yeah, even with Curse getting that pick. <laughs> They lose a man. Helios just walks away from this. And Ox is saying, all right, let's fight. I got my intervention up. He's resigned himself to his fate here at the hands of... <laughs> Whoa! No Whoa! way! No way! Oh, so close. A special walks away. <laughs> Quas has yet to finish off Gale and almost lets him down. Okay, though. Uh, we were about to make the point where, you know, last week... Uh, Curse were able to recover from right. one of those mid-game mistakes, but this time, the mid-game mistake of the Baron doesn't look like they can recover from it, just from the sheer power of giving away these picks. The Kale plus Rise plus Jinx is just too much to deal with, even with a Tristana in your back pocket. Right, and that's been plateaued. The Negatron had to come in. It's not continuous damage coming from Tristana. And with her kind of coming out of her power curve right now, that's when you would expect the damage to be, Ooh. not defense. Very desperate Baron here for Curse, but they're taking it down quickly. And EG do not have Altec. Altec, the key member, going to be very far be away. Let's see if they can actually do it. Very big plays. Baron's down to about 4K health, 4,000 immediately right now. Still looking to fight this one. That's a pretty healthy Baron considering 4,000. No smites are going to go down. Dominate straight up into Repel. The entire team of Curse is now backing off. They did follow this call, but it seems like EG already had it in mind. Yeah, Baron number two start for Curse. Baron number two not killed for Curse. Oh, oh, wow! What a great combination. Awesomely played. Whoa. Great bot lane oh, accuracy there. Crepo and Altec. <laughs> Both dead on with the skill shots. That is pretty much the nail in the coffin here for Curse. That, that for EG, that bottom lane, I think, has exploded as a new bottom lane Ooh, more than any yeah. I've really ever seen. They have some great results when they are on fire. Yeah, they really do, showing up extremely big this time around. 
There's the first inhibitor. Like we said, when the first inhibitor goes down, the game goes quickly after. It's only 10 seconds on Dominate. They got spawns coming off the Baron, but they still have the Baron, so they'll be right back. Yeah, and two inhibitors down means that you get two lanes of uh, super minions buffing each other up. Pretty much evil geniuses just have to walk in there. Yeah, the waiting game. And throw a parade for the super <laughs> while they take down next. Rain on Curse's parade. Like Cop said, Somebody always has a lead. <laughs> it's usually your opponent. Ouch. Key, see if they can change that around. It looks grim right now for Curse, but anything can happen. 11,000 gold lead is really what EG is just going to flatten Curse with as they make their way into the next base. 2K, 404 on Alltech, consistently bringing through the cash out of the laning phase and into the fighting phase. Looks like it might be a Mercurial Scimitar for him as well. Yeah, because of... Uh the Mikhail's uh, mm -hmm. changes, a lot of people have been going to get that, but you know, now he's got Mikhail's, plus he's got a Quicksilver <laughs> Sash. Plenty of options for Altec now. There's not really much hope for Curse bringing him down in the back lane. Man, look at this, this Kale though. I'm talking about making it hard for them to bring down Altec. Right. A lot of Kales have pretty much just given up that Runon's build. It's not that popular anymore. Okay. Uh, pretty much everybody's gone back to this ability power build and maybe picking up the Runons as either their fifth or sixth item and just for the end game splash. Right now though he has that that point that's extremely scary with kill where he has so much burst. Right. A little elixir on top just means somebody's gonna get in a hurting. Scrying ore being used out. The damage coming through. If EG is to get into range. Looking at the mid lane, you know, we talked about a little earlier that curse kind of excels one at a time, never in the same game. Boy Boy, 332 to 250 with kills in the mid lane. He had a good time there, but like we said, couldn't revolve around the rest of the team. Not doing so well in the lanes. Right now they're trying to pick up the slack, stop the inhibitors from going down, but it is a stranglehold from Evil Geniuses right now. Taking control, 38 minutes. They're trying to dictate this last inhibitor turret. Yeah, Christmas in their mid game opportunity. Now it's going to be a very difficult road. <laughs> Slow hits. They're Back to the other side get of the map. It. Here's these minions we were talking about, Kobe. It's going to be so hard to defend everything at once. Curse looks to turn the base into shambles, or keep their base from being turned into shambles. Whoa! I should say, that's one shot. Carries the binding with him along the room prison, rather. And they continue into the fight. Next special, he is doing some good defense for his team, but goes down in the end. They're going to be cleaning this one up. Alltech with a few more kills. A triple kill to end out the game at 7-0-4 on his first Jinx play in the North American LCS. The last shot. He gets double lift on the five. Goes oh! for the He gets the Penta kill. Oh! First play on Jinx in the LCS. 13-6, 39 minutes. EG wipes out Curse. Alltech with the Penta kill ending. Evil Genius is coming out so strong here. They have wanted to separate themselves from this bottom three pack for a while now. Bringing in Helios, coming out with a very strong show in on 4.10. They're making a pretty good case for themselves so far here. A lot of teams that would make two changes during a season would be crushed, crumbling, trying to find a way to get the communication going. But with the change at AD carry and so far a tryout at jungle, things seem to be going the right way for Evil Geniuses. Definitely say that again. All members performing very well. Coming out very strong. Timely interventions from Inox, Black Shields and Bindings from Crepo. Good job by everybody so far. Curse? Yeah, they're definitely gonna, gonna rethink that, that mid-game Baron there. It's a little bit rough for them. Kale teleporting into the middle, invulnerable as soon as she arrives. Yeah. Very, very scary. Really great play. EG kind of dismantling the entire map. They were down, uh, I believe, 2,000 gold at one point, 4,000 almost, probably. And then they were really able to switch it around after that dragon fight. Hey, what happens when you get Alltech a few kills? He goes off. He just goes off. New champion in this game, unique pick on Jinx for him, and it just played out well. It's not even like Crepo felt uncomfortable in that lane. Yeah, that was Alltech with just Infinity Edge, boosted up to Alltech with Infinity Edge plus Static Shiv, and yep. he just went crazy after he got that damage. And we actually didn't get 
the standard lanes this time. So things kind of faltered out for the top laners, and we saw how much more that hurt Renekton this time, how much it kind of gave Kale the upper hand, and then you can't do much when Kale's up like that. We saw Quas just getting pushed out in the split push. And EG played that early game very safe, too. Even though they had control of bottom, they waited until they saw the mid laner go back. They, yeah. they were completely sure that it would be a safe early dragon. Then they decided to take the money and the early gold pool there right. uh, helped them get through this early game that was going to be rough. And it was different of them a little bit as well in the form that Crepo was kind of all over. Jinx was, Altec was free farming bottom lane, and it's not going to do much before level six. You're not going to get huge, but Cop was sharing that farm with Expecial on the top, and they weren't having a free farm support roam mid, keeping pressure off, helping the team out in the jungle if invaded by Dominic. And impressed with Poe Belter on Rise, handling that mid yeah. lane very safe as well. Yes, giving up a lot of CS early yeah. because of the pressure you get from hit up. Curse. <laughs> However, he stayed relevant. He was just rise in the late game. Was able yeah. to keep up and farm after uh, the initial deficit early on and claw his way back into the game. Something 4.10 has kind of done, uh, I think, is teams are closing it out when they have the lead. A little more being definitive. But like we said, once a team has that lead, 4.10 seems to be a little unruly, and it's a little harder to come back because you have that Kale in the top lane. If it's been picked, hard to come back on if Kale gets a lead. And EG worked that very well. Found their lead, found the win. Yeah, a lot of teams are saying, no way are we ever going to get Kale. Right, Very right. rare pick to see get through draft phase. And uh, Evil Jesus definitely punished Curse for letting that one through. So 4.10 has shown us quite a bit of Tristana coming back into play. Mm -hmm. Definitely been making a lot of different impact. options. Wins, there. losses. Yeah, different Cop options. Copple went, went the early Blade of the Ruin King, and it worked out well for them at that dragon fight Static because he first. could easily handle Helios one versus yeah. one. It worked out. Small things in the favor of Curse, but then big things like the win in favor of EG. And for the straight story on EG's win, let's send it over to the guys at the analyst desk. Thank you very much, Riv. What's up, guys? Joined by Poe Belter and Crepo, now of Evil Geniuses. Guys, congrats on the win. Uh, and, uh, you know, I got to say, the game ended really interestingly. Uh, Pen to kill on the fountain, a good way to close out a game. What did you guys think about that one? Johnny was actually, like, so overwhelmed by it. That uh, normally he would be sitting here. Mm -hmm. We asked him, but he wasn't feeling too well. So uh, <laughs> yeah. I just decided to uh, replace him for now. Well, we wanted him up here, but yes, he said he was feeling ill. I want to take a look at another Pentakill, though, because it let's seemed a little. Let's let's look. Let's and maybe have you guys walk us through uh, how I didn't, awesome this Pentakill. I didn't even notice the Pentakill was going on. Yeah, he just he got a few crits on the Nexus or something. Let's take another look at this. Roll this. Roll this one. All right, Paul, what's going on? Um, all right, we just pushed the turret. I went for the flash root, but she got the jump off. Um, Inox KLLs me right here, I think, when I start backing out. So that's a little bit of miscommunication. But right now, we're basically just so fed that we're just tearing through their entire team. And then the resets start to happen. And um, yep, triple. And then I didn't even realize he was going for the Penta. Yeah, I was just tanking it out so he could get the kill for, uh, you know, for those fantasy points. It was insane the amount of damage he did. Yeah. I was at the Nexus Tower trying to finish the game. I'm like, guys, why are we diving? And then I suddenly I see like a Penta on my screen. I'm like, okay, fair enough. That works. And Paul Belter, you're the great enabler right there, suiciding yourself to the Nexus. Yeah. <laughs> For your friend. Mm -hmm. I think the real big takeaway is that Scumbag Crepo is trying to end the game and deny the Penta kill from his AD carry, so I'm glad. Come, uh, come on far away. Yeah. Just focusing on, uh, on objectives. Objectives. That's good. That's good. And of course, you guys uh, did a great job this game. In fact, you guys, uh, the objectives were a really big part of this game, actually. Um, you guys got first dragon, if I recall properly. They lane swapped, actually, which we've not seen almost at all so far in the, in the patch. Talk to me about that. I was trying to figure out why they would lane swap. I felt like their lanes would be fine against us, and scaling generally was in our favor. The fact that we had managed to pick up that early Drake was really good for us, because if you saw how the game evolved during like the early mid game, we kind of fell behind. They had so much better early game uh, champions than us, and we just kept losing objectives after objectives. But because we had that one dragon, and then later a pick on Syndra, that's what kind of kept us in the game. And then, yeah, they overreached a little bit by doing Baron um, twice, and then, yeah, we came back. Yeah, the Barons were really interesting, actually. One of our uh, other replays is that first Baron fight, if we can pull that up on the screen, because uh, they kind of go for it, and they're in the Fog of War. You guys have to kind of face check into them, but talk to me, uh, Krep, if you want to do this one, your thought process on checking this Baron. Well, at, at this point, like, every time, I just, yeah, you want to face check, and then you want to get Vision out, and every time, like, they started, so you have to fight. So right now, we know they're off it, so we are a little easier. We're just trying to kill the front line. At this point, Renekton dives in very far, but he only has uh, magic resistance, so no armor, so he gets shredded by Altic, and at that point, like, Team is going nuts. Like Altix gets get excited. Everybody's jumping left and right, just trying to chase. And 
Yeah, he just shows up like this game. He just once he gets that initial reset, he's so comfortable on Jinx that he just keeps going and going, and he's, he's winning all these fights. I don't know. You actually came by uh, early today and talked to me for a second that uh, four point ten wasn't necessarily the best for you guys, but you've got one of the best eighty carries in the league. Seems to be like that role's been buffed in this patch. Do you still think it's weak for you guys? Uh, well, I think on any patch, Johnny will will perform. I just I just don't like the the way uh, sustain is being shifted from eighty carries uh, onto supports because like mm -hmm. they they like rushing these like I edge or. They just don't want to do the Bork every game anymore, or the BT. And then you're stuck with playing champions like Nami more, or just like these save range supports. In two weeks, we'll be seeing Sona again. And we saw our game previously, yes, actually. Oh, and they won. Yeah, so therefore, they Sona 100% win. win rate so far. I don't know, man. Nami lost today. <laughs> you played Morgana. You didn't heal anybody. Well, I heal myself with yeah. my passive. Come on. Okay, <laughs> sorry. It's still a sustained support. Pub out there. Uh, you had the rise pick. That's actually an old pick of right. yours from mid lane. Why break it out now, especially against a laner as strong as Syndra? Um, so we picked the line because it does pretty well against Yasuo. So that was what we were anticipating them to pick with the Tristana mm -hmm. and Braum picks. We thought that they would go for a setup and then go with um, Gragas and Shiva on the top. I think um, they actually did and then just decided like right. Yeah, I think he saw the rise and then said, hmm. no, I'm not going to go for it. The um, preemptive counter pick. But yeah, I realized that rise is actually still pretty good in mid when Dade actually has been playing it over in mm -hmm. OGN. Um, so I said, hey, I'll check this out. And then Helios was able to get in contact with him and ask him some things. So uh, that's been really helpful. Wow. And even though the lane was just like absolutely horrible, I was down like four of the CS and there was <laughs> yeah. nothing I could do. Um, later in the game, I just scaled back. Yeah. And you guys are this really fascinating team to me now because you have so many really young people on that team, yourself, Alltech, and then Crepo, Crepo, who's still young, but 24, and there's a big age difference, especially with Helios. How are you like, mixing in your personalities? Because you seem like all these kind of older veterans and then a lot of new guys, but it's starting to work. How's the personalities meshing? How are we mixing? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think we all have really similar personalities. We're easygoing in real life, but we're serious about the game, and so even though we're far apart in age, um, our personalities are pretty similar, so it doesn't pose much of an issue. I mean, and if there's any issues, like... We just bring them up. I mean, every team has their own problems at one point, mm -hmm. and then you just try to bring them up and fix them. Um, that's the p good part about being a veteran. It's like you've had plenty of issues already, so you're used <laughs> to fixing them and talking about them, and that's what, just what we try to do. Sure, I guess you've played with 17-year-olds before anyway in the first place, so yep. I guess it makes much of sense. You guys are actually a team of players from four countries as well, which is pretty remarkable, and that all seems to work out. I don't have a question. I just wanted to point that out, really. Um, <laughs> but what I wanted to get back to, actually, was you talked about the fact that you got to listen from Dade, one of like the best rise in the world about how to play mid lane. Um, and I wanted to ask you sort of how many styles do you guys bring in? Because of course Helios has been playing in Korea for like ever. Krepo, of course, you played for years in Europe as well. Where are all your influences coming from? Um, I think we just try mainly to learn from other NALCS teams and watch OGN from time to time because OGN is like the top competitive league in the world right now. And um, the NALCS because we want to learn about our opponents, so it's mainly those two. Yeah, I don't think my knowledge or, or my uh, history in Europe is, is as rev rev relevant, mm -hmm. Lando. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I mean, I played there like a year ago. By th by now, the meta has changed so much and so far. And when I was playing there at the end, I wasn't performing too well towards the end of the season. So I don't think we should take from that period of time. <laughs> yeah. Let's just look at the Koreans. <laughs> Put on still these now, yeah. Mono Crystal. I mean, you guys are now four and nine. But with the victory brings you into a three-way tie, actually. And I remember talking with you guys a little bit previously, saying you really need to make a move to distinguish yourself from those teams. But with Complexity also getting the win against Cloud9, how much do you guys actually have to win to distinguish yourselves? Well, if you look at long-term, like short-term, you want them to lose, and you want to be above them and get that sixth place. But long-term, if these bottom teams uh, keep taking games off the big dogs, Eventually, maybe we'll come to like a four-way tie for, for the bottom four places and you can slowly move your way up. Just depends where your ambitions are. Like if you want to get that sixth place or maybe get somewhat lucky and, and end up fifth or even higher, um, I think we just have to take it one game at a time. Well, speaking of taking it one game at a time, you're three games behind Cloud9 right now. You play them tomorrow. Of course, they lost to Complexity today. What are you thinking about tomorrow's match? Go ahead. Bill Belter. Okay. What do you <laughs> yeah, Crepo talked enough. Yep. Um, we did really well against them last time. Uh, yeah, and um, wait, wait a second. Call nine. You, you beat them. Yeah, we, we did, yeah. Win. Yeah. did win. Yeah, did win. So Complexity was able to take them down today. I think that we'll be able to form uh, another similar upset against them, and um, hopefully that will help close the gap and then start moving us up into that sixth place spot. And then from there, maybe we can look at going even further from there.
Cool. Looks like you guys are doing pretty well. So then um, one final question then, as you're talking about trying to climb up the ranks, you, we had a sort of pregame sort of package from you guys talking about kind of your synergy coming together and whatnot. How long until you guys become this top tier team where you can make the run of the playoffs? Um, I don't think at this point we can really say, you know, okay, in X number of months we're going to be the best. But sure. I think it's one just... One game at a time. We'll yeah, one game at a time. <laughs> okay, okay. We still had plenty of issues this game even. Like there was sure. this period where we were behind again and... Uh, yeah, we play a scaling comp, but I felt like we felt we fell a little bit farther behind than we, we would like to, and we got lucky in the sense that we got a good pick, and then some Baron contest. But we could have technically lost this game, so we just need to like fix that and then fix all the rest, and then yeah. hopefully learn from those Koreans. We're also gonna have a closer look at Paul Belter's potential later in the show tomorrow, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. Mm -hmm. That'll be, be fun. Good. Tune in tomorrow, guys. But of course, keep tuning in today because we've got to take one final break before we kick off our last battle of the day for first place between Dignitas and LMQ. Don't go anywhere. Cold, I hate cold. Oh. But you should cha 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 <laughs> It's Alltech on the backside. What is Alltech doing? Fights, he crushes with the rest of the team. Oh! He hits the staff, he flashes in for the double kill. Alltech going crazy this fight. A triple kill? Yeah, it's going to Paul Belcher though because he's a good guy. Bear number two start for Curse. Bear number two not killed for oh! oh! What a great combination. Keep their base from being turned into shit. Let's say that's one shot. Carries the binding with him along the room prison rather. And they continue into the fight next special. He is doing some good defense for his team, but goes down in the end. They're going to be cleaning this one up. Alltech with a few more kills. A triple kill to end out the game at 7-0-4 on his first Jinx play in the North American LCS. The last shot. He gets double lift on the five. Going for oh! the five. He gets the 